Hello, my name is Grant Paulet with 5D Survival. Today I want to share with you some of my food storage strategies to prepare for power outages or food shortages. In the news yesterday, President Biden mentioned about real food shortages. Of course, not sure why he called it real food, food shortages, because are there fake food shortages? Anyway, still, Food preparation, food storage, is something that should be done regardless. It's never going to be a stupid decision to buy food, especially when in our society we spend so much money on frivolous things. So that's something certainly to think about. And to be clear, none of this is based on fear. This isn't about panicking. It's about taking action and responding. It's also not about a me first attitude. It's about being prepared in order to help other people. That's what 5D survival mentality is about. Even if you don't or can't afford to fully prepare as much as you would like, you can still take very small steps today. I remember a movie once advised calling it baby steps. Once you start preparing, you will gain momentum and it's super fun. You can even get with friends and family and make it like a game. This doesn't have to be anything that's stressful. To be fully prepared, it's about having a certain mindset. You have to collapse your beliefs that a disaster will not happen and transition to what are you going to do about it when it occurs. So this is no time for fear programming of, oh, why is this happening? Why is this happening to me? I've decided to take a hybrid approach, as you might say, both by obtaining freeze-dried food, to my right, as well as regular dried food, which I have here on display for you. Now, I would love to just have a one-year supply of nothing but freeze-dried food alone, but freeze-dried food is much more expensive to purchase. For example, $100 of regular food can cost $500 to $700 in freeze-dried food. That's why I have taken this hybrid strategy. So all of this here that you see is about $1,700 in total. $1,000 for the freeze-dried food and then approximately $700 for the dry food. Now one thing to keep in mind when planning your food stockpiling strategy is not to rely on any frozen foods. I'm originally from the New Orleans, Louisiana area and have experienced multiple hurricanes over the years, including Hurricane Katrina. When disasters occur, you will not be able to depend on electricity. Thus, I look at refrigerated and frozen foods as a very ineffective food disaster strategy. If you're not prepared with food, the best case scenario is that you will be waiting in a government handout line. That's certainly something that none of us would want to experience. The worst case scenario is you're not even in a food line and you're unable to locate any food at all. I remember Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans when all local government collapsed and people were stranded. This isn't a theoretical situation. It's already happened in the United States. The question is, are you paying attention? Also, you have to think about will you be, where will you be during a disaster. Many people think that they can just hunker down at home, but the reality is that you may need to drive in a car or even be on foot walking. So if we look at the example right now in Ukraine, people in eastern Ukraine are fleeing because of the threat of the Russian military. So this reality of not knowing your exact location should be reflected in your food storage strategy. I maintain all of this dry food in boxes, which means that I can load this in my car really quickly, as fast as five minutes. I recommend everyone also maintain a to-go bag with everything already organized. You want a to-go bag that you could just grab and take in one minute. So to reiterate, five minutes to grab all of this and just one minute to grab a to-go bag. Also, this is all food that has a six month to two year shelf life, that is the dried food. It's also food that I already eat as part of my diet. So if no emergency happens, 
I'm just going to eat through the supply and then replace each item as I eat it. I estimate that this is approximately six months of worth of food for one person. So with two people, you have to cut that estimate in half to about three months. And then with three people, it's about a two month supply. In other words, you don't wanna just think about having lots of food. You want to know mathematically how many days you can survive without obtaining new food supplies. Also, I would recommend to start eating through the dry food first before I ever touch my freeze dried food. Here is why. Perhaps you shelter in place and then have to leave. I prefer to take the freeze dried food because it's so convenient and easy to grab instead of trying to grab all this dry food. So let me show you what I have here to begin. So if we look here, I have plenty of vitamin D3, which is about a one year supply. So if I'm stuck in a situation where I'm out of the sunlight because I'm inside my home, that can impact my immune system. Vitamin D3 gives you what you can't get from the sun uh, during that time period. It also helps protect against depression. Now, I also have, look here, I have eight bags of lentils with about nine servings each. So this gives me up to 72 meals. The bags are cheap and only cost about $2 each at Whole Foods. So this provides you with plenty of protein and nutrition. And lentils are a great option also if you're on a budget. So that's something to think about when you're planning. How much does all of this cost? I also have 11 bags of quinoa, which gives me over 100 servings. Quinoa is almost like a superfood because it has protein, carbs, fiber, and more. And I already eat quinoa nearly every day, so it's just great for my regular diet as well. I also here have about 40 bags of tuna, and I've selected the tuna that doesn't contain palm oil, so you can still try to be as healthy as possible. I also have 12 packs of seaweed here, which is good for all sorts of nutrients. And then I also have four bags of beef jerky, so I can shelter in place Texas style. There's also seven containers of Himalayan salt, which is good for hydration as an electrolyte. You can actually pour Himalayan salt into your water and it makes what's called Soleil. You might want to look into that because I've drunk Himalayan salt water for over 20 years. It's great for your digestion, it's great for your complexion, and Himalayan salt can also, by the way, be used as a preservative. So in emergencies, these different types of products can be traded with other people. So that's something also to keep in mind, the trading aspect. Also, I have eight large containers of honey, which is probably a good one year supply. And honey is important because it has nutrition, plenty of calories, and it's also just a nice tasty snack in that situation. In a survival situation, you might feel stressed and so you're going to require even more calories than normal. I also have three containers of raisins, which is really good for digestion and calories. It's a way of having a little bit of fruit, but it won't perish as quickly. Also, I have two large containers of apple cider vinegar. So that's also just good for your health in general. I also recommend charcoal tablets, which is actually helpful for food poisoning and really beyond food disaster preparing uh, this is just something people should have regardless so it's called activated charcoal you can buy it at Whole foods i also have 12 containers of almond butter which should last about three months um, the expiration date shows september 2022 so i just need to eat through some of this and then replace my supply as i go through it i also here have four bags of coffee with an expiration date of August 2022. I definitely want coffee during the apocalypse. I have a three pound bag of chia seeds that has also plenty of nutrition, such as protein, fiber. You can also get your good fats. And that here is approximately a one month supply, depending on how much you eat it, of course. I also have 11 bars of soap at Whole Foods that I get for $1.99. You definitely don't want to stink during the apocalypse. And what's great about this is you can just literally throw this in a to-go bag. And 
you know, again, you want to smell good. Um, yeah, especially if you're not having access to hygiene during the situation. I also have four boxes of toothpaste, so you don't want your breath to stink again during apocalypse. And there we go. I also have iodine peels. If there was a type of dirty nuclear bomb that goes off, 56 capsules. And the key would be to take this immediately after radiation exposure. And I got a bunch of extra bottles just in case I want to share with friends or family or anybody who's nearby. My goal was not just to help myself, but of course to help other people. Now, by the way, during a radiation exposure, you'll want to shelter in place for two weeks, which is also why an emergency radio is important. I'd also recommend that you get a tarp in your home, but that goes beyond the scope of this particular video. I got a bunch of almonds, as you can see, and cashews, so plenty of that options. I also bought some broccoli sprouts, which is uh, also good for extra nutrition. So nutrition is going to be important, not just having a lot of food. I also have five buckets of freeze-dried food, as you can see to my right. And this is supposed to last for about two months. Now, I'm not going to go right to this. Um, it's going to be the last resort after I deplete the dried food. So let's also talk about water filtration. Here I have 200 capsules, germicide tablets, for water filtration that helps to kill bacteria. This can filter about two, about 100 quarters or 25 gallons. I also have five life straws as well that I can use, very portable. And then there's a Berkey water filter that I maintain in my home. So if you haven't prepared at all, I'd start with water filtration. I hope this video has helped you in preparing for your stockpiling of food. I will include in the link below where you can buy some of these products. Share in the comments what you are doing to prepare. And no, most importantly, don't panic if you haven't prepared yet. Just start today. Literally, stop the video, drive to Whole Foods, H-E-B, wherever you shop, and prepare. Coordinate resources with friends and build a community network of other preppers. You see, it's not just conspiracy theorists anymore that are preppers. We are all preppers.